Hey guys, welcome to episode six of Frog Dog Fridays. Uh, we got Mr. Milo here. He's actually one of our foster dogs, a uh, little bit longer term foster guys. So um, he's going to be helping us out today. Today is what I want to be able to call building reliability. So we've gone through our uh, first six stages of our Say Yes to Your Dog exercise. Uh, we have gone through acknowledgement, stage one, right? Just being able to have, if it's a little bit more of a shy dog or a little more standoffish dog, the dog can look in our direction we can reward that for the dog just acknowledging that we're there from there we get into direct eye contact I don't care where the dog's body's at at this point but I do want that dog to be me full-on eye contact from there stage three we've moved into getting committed engagement where that dog is sitting pretty much right in front of us staring into our eyes then there we get into stage four that find me which is I'm going to turn my back from the dog turn uh, to the side and have that dog be able to come now find me and engage my attention. So this dog would have to be able to move into finding where I'm at and start to work to uh, create engagement that way. Stage five we get into is building duration. Duration is actually really great for helping that dog understand. Now it's not just quick, quick, quick repetition, but you need to maintain that attention just a little bit longer. And you can build that attention up as long as you, or for as, you know, however long of duration that you want, whether it's two seconds or whether it's a full minute, it doesn't matter. That's up to you on how far you wanna build that dura uh, duration with your dog. From there, we get into stage six, which was the exorcism. We did that one last week when I was in Utah. Um, so stage six is building up the exorcism and teaching that dog, when I flip, you flip with me right and getting that dog being able to turn on a dime to maintain where you're at and what you're doing uh, so the episode six today we're building reliability what does that mean we're going to be building in distractions I want to be able to show you guys how to start getting the dog even from further distances being able to come in and find you you're gonna see here that I have Milo um, on his regular leash attached to a long line this is gonna give him more flexibility to get away from me right um, and be able to still come back and choose me over his environment. So this is all kind of distraction related stuff, but it's really just building that reliability with our dogs and being able to pick us, stay focused on us. Now you notice he's not just drilling me in the eyes right now. He knows that I'm not in the game right now. Um, however, he's kind of ready. He's waiting. He keeps checking in with me. And this is what we want to be able to create with our dogs. Let's say we're out on a hike. They can come check in, say, hey, you need me yet? Nope, we're good, okay. Right, go off a little bit, they check back in. Ready, are we doing anything? No, we're good. So being able to teach your dog to default into attention work makes a really big deal when it comes to teaching our dogs how to check in with us, how to be proactive in keeping an eye on where we're at and what we're doing, right? They're always kind of ready. I always like to say they're on call, but they're not working 24 seven. And that's ideal for what we wanna be able to have with our dogs is that they're ready to do stuff with us, right? They enjoy it. It's not being forced or coerced out of them. It is something that they are readily and eager waiting to do. So I just wanted to give a few minutes there, go over the first six stages that we, we build in our Say Yes to Your Dog, and now we're gonna get to adding on more layers and more complexity to it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and Sorry about that, guys. I uh, Christopher is gonna silence that for this moment. Um, but what I wanna start with is when I first add the long line, I'm gonna do it in a relatively quiet area, maybe an area that the dog has already been used to working in. Um, but what now is gonna happen is the dog has more flexibility to go out and explore the environment around them. Um, and that is going to give the dog more chance to be distracted from you and what you're doing. Now let's say you have a dog here like Milo, he's gone through the six stages, he's really, really confident with his attention work, what he's doing, he enjoys the game, he loves the game, he really wants to get into it. I might have to manufacture ways by tossing food, doing something like that to get him to move away from me and have the potential for him to get more distracted. Uh, but I'm gonna show you how we begin that and we start by just attaching a long line to the end of the dog's leash, all right? So when we get set up, I'm just gonna back up, gonna give my receiver to Milo so he knows that we're in the game. As soon as he checks me out, again, he's gonna know, yes. I'm gonna start maybe some stage three, a little bit of committed engagement with the dog so he knows that we're ready, we're in it, we're doing it, yes. Go away, do a little food play. He enjoys it, he loves it, he loves chasing it down. Right, I got my dog interested, he knows that we're playing the game now. All right, he's gonna check me, yes. Check me back out, 
One of the things that I can do with him, good boy, is toss that poop. So now he has more leash to be able to run and get away from me. So Milo's over there, I'm gonna be able to turn my back from where he's at and say, hey man, when you want, when, you want, when you're ready, come back over here, we can re-engage that game. My receivers are open right here, waiting for him. He comes back in. Yes, good boy. Yeah, good job. Toss that food, so that way he creates more space from me. I'm gonna turn my back to him again. I guess I'm creating more of a 90 degree angle at this point. And I'm just gonna wait for him. Christopher's gonna 
really try hard to get Milo to be distracted. So we're gonna go. What I want you guys to see is if Milo looks away, it's no big deal. There's no verbal correction. There's no anything that I do other than wait for him to recommit to engagement with me, and then we go into it. Yes, good boy. So the hard part with throwing objects, once they're down on the ground, they stop moving, and then the dog can come look back at me. Uh, so, but it's a good thing to practice, and I don't care that my dog looks away. It's okay, my dog doesn't have to just drill me in the eyes. I want my dog to notice it, to acknowledge it, and then we can move on, right? Uh, because that's what's ideal in the real world, right? My dog can accept whatever's happening out there, look back to me and say, hey, all's good. So now I'm gonna wait for Milo to make the choice to come back to me. All right, Christopher's got a squeaky toy. I think it's a brand new toy that's been in our facility. He hasn't seen before. So Christopher is being very nonchalant. Yes, right? He's not focusing on Milo. He's not giving any attention to Milo. He's just standing there squeaking that toy. I hope he was in the, in the shot so you guys can see exactly what he was doing. But if not, he is literally standing there completely ignoring Milo, not paying attention, not looking at him, and just squeaking the toy. We're gonna set that one up again so you can see it. Yes. Oh boy. Good job, buddy. All right, we're gonna try to get something new. Maybe grab a walker. So it doesn't matter what the object is, right? Christopher's gonna start before Milo is even in position. Um, once again, Milo is a little bit more advanced with this. In the beginning, you might want to wait until your dog is maybe coming for sitting in front of you. Play it by ear with your dog. Yes. Now, I waited Milo out, wanted to see how long he could sustain holding attention with me with that thing behind him kind of clanking around. He looked away, looked right back. I was able to easily reward him. That was really nice. Now you guys see him still throwing the food, and that's because Milo is such a quick eater, and he comes right back, right back, that this gives me more time to talk to you. Normally, I would be setting this up just repetition after repetition, so that way I can move through this a little bit faster. Very nice. All right, Christopher's got something else. Make sure you're in the scene if you can. We've got a big blow up fitness ball of some sort. Makes you nervous? Yes. Right? So, that made Milo a little bit nervous. Did you guys notice Milo kind of scooted off to the side? His whole body language was kind of shifted away from it. So, what did Christopher do going from heavy bounce to much softer? He read Milo and said, it's a little too much for me to be bouncing it that heavily to start out with. We're going to use that distraction again because I want to be able to have Christopher build it up to where he can bounce it at that intensity and Milo goes, oh, that's no big deal. Now, he can accomplish that one of two ways. He can come up that close again and be continually bounce it quieter until Milo no longer cares, or he can start it a little bit further of a distance and bounce it that loud and slowly, progressively move it closer. It really just depends on what's gonna be most ideal. So, we got Milo coming back over here now. He's searching for more kibble. Christopher's gonna dance with that leash. See what he can handle. Yes, not even a flinch that time, right? So that was the first time Milo's probably seen that exercise ball, right? No big deal. That after that second time right there, he goes, oh, that's nothing. I can handle it. Realize it's not gonna hurt me, and it's no big deal. So maybe this time, drag a chair behind you or something. So we got Milo coming back over. He's such a good boy. He's such a good participant. Make him hold out a little longer. Yes. So Christopher opted, woo, go here, buddy. opted to start out really quiet. Why? Because it's metal dragging on a floor. Didn't want to freak Milo out. Luckily, Milo is a pretty sound temperament. Um, but he started off pretty quiet with that. Now, this next time, he's probably going to actually be dragging it a little bit longer, a little bit louder, making a little bit more of a ruckus with it, so you can kind of see the progression of that. Let, let Milo finish eating the last pieces of kibble. Yes, good boy. Good job, man. Very nice. So we're gonna add just a couple more pieces, maybe 
drag the trash can around. Right? And a couple more things that I want you guys to be able to see. As your dog progresses, right, from when we started with the first just the long line, building your dog up with that, you can then, without the long line, or even with it, but be able to drop your leash. All right? And dropping that leash, and now he has no connection to you other than his willingness and wantingness to engage with you. That's another great way to build up this exercise. So distraction. Distraction. Yes, good. So that one was much harder for Milo, right? Looking left to right, something's walking behind him, being drugged, making a noise, right? As soon as I say Y-E-S, Christopher stops what he's doing. In this case, he legitimately picked up the trash can so it didn't have the potential to make noise. All right, so your person that you're using to distract must be in tune with what you're doing. So Maya was coming back, he's here, very nice. Distraction. Yes, good boy! So he pretty hard committed that time. He looked away once and came back and I could see his eyes making me, or telling me that he was just a little bit uncomfortable with that clink, clank, clink, clank of the trash can. So I had to reward him and I wanted him to know that was awesome, right? My reflection, my distribution of my YES terminal marker said, oh my goodness, you just did great, really good job. All right, we're gonna try the trash can just one more time. And then I'm gonna talk about how to kind of set stuff up on your own. Um, when, when you're ready for that, if you don't have a person to help you be the distraction. Yes, good boy, Milo, good job. So, Christopher got much closer that time. It was pretty awesome. So that was really nice. You can see the progression of using just one piece uh, or one thing that could be a potential distraction for your dog. There's unlimited things, doors opening, closing, people walking in and out. You can start adding in different locations. So go from working inside your living room to now working out in the backyard. Then from working in the backyard to working on your front porch where there's people walking by on the sidewalk. Then you can start taking it up and down your sidewalk. Then you can go to the park and just spend some time working at a park, maybe a quieter place. Then build up to being able to do this right next to the dog park. So now what I wanna be able to do and this is something I don't think we've done with Milo before either. I've got now food in both of my hands. I'm going to be the sole distractor. What better way, right? So he knows I have food in my hands. They're closed down at my side. Yes, go boy. Nice and easy. Food in both of my hands again. He sees them. A little bit more in front of me. Yes, all right? So I'm building this up to where I don't care that there's food here. I need you to be able to focus on me not the fact that I have food in my hands. So now my hands are more open, like he could actually get those pieces. Yes, the boy, All right? So what I'm doing is I'm legitimately building confidence in him that as soon as you look at me, I'm going to pay you for it. So ignore all of this other stuff and just focus on me, all right? All I wanna be able to create with him. And Milo's a pretty good workhorse, so he can work a lot longer than, than other dogs can. Um, if you remember, like my little dog, Buko, he had a pretty short fuse where he couldn't, couldn't sustain working a lot. So now I'm gonna create movement with my hands, and I need him to still focus on me. Yes, all right, he knows I have food in them. He can see they're moving, but his eyes are staying focused on my eyes. That's what I'm looking for. The other things that we can be doing, I could be holding, let me find something here really quick. Where is this thing? All right, this uh, Arizona Dynabacks, right? So as soon as Milo comes back over here, he's gonna commit to engagement. Yes. Something that I have myself, this rattlesnake thing for our baseball, something or other, um, but in my own hand, I'm shaking it right in front of his face, right? I'm not going crazy, hog wild at this point, but eventually I can get to that point, right? I can just keep shaking really hard and he's like, oh well, it doesn't matter. And that's what we're building up with our dogs, all right? So, putting that back, all right? He 
eventually I want to be able to get to the point, right, where my arms are going up and down. Now oh, that was a hard one. Yes, the boy. All right, that one was much harder. You could see his head bobbing back and forth. And eventually he goes, oh, that's right. If I just look at you, you're going to let me have stuff, right? So as soon as he comes back, we're going to try that one again. Yes, good boy. How much quicker did it happen that time, right? It only took one time for him to realize, I just need to pay attention to you, and I get it. Eventually, you can build it up to where the dog is looking at you directly in the eyes and you're dropping food next to their head. I don't think he's quite ready for that one yet. Um, but that doesn't have to take long to build that up with them. Good boy, I'm going to just do that last one one more time before we go ahead and quit Milo. Yes, good boy. Very nice. All right, guys, let me know if you have any questions. There is unlimited things that you can do to add in distractions to build distance with your dog and making sure they're being, up, being able to come back and check in with you, um, to be able to include new environments. This stuff is pretty in-depth that you can get with it, but this is how we start building that reliability aspect with our dogs, of starting in a you know quieter room and building in this stuff. Then I have people coming in and out of the doors. Then I take the dog outside and start practicing it outside with them. Then I take it to the park and start practicing outside at the park. I got other dogs that are doing stuff. Right? I've got other dogs training obedience, and what am I doing with Milo? I'm sitting here going, hey, pay attention to me, ignore that, right? Now, the whole point, once again, is not that the dog has to drill you in the eyes without breaking. It's the point that the dog can look at it, acknowledge it. Yes, good boy. Very nice. That the dog can look at it, acknowledge it, and say, yep, no big deal, and be able to come back and check with me. One of the most important parts of why we do this is because it's a great trust building exercise with our dog, right? Let's say you have a dog that's nervous of seeing other dogs on leash. Normally they're reactive. If that dog could acknowledge the fact that there's another dog on a leash and then come in and check up with you and say, I see that, you always help me out, right? Are we, are we good? And I go, yes, you are very good. And then I can create space that is a huge trust building moment with that dog of saying, I've got your back, you don't need to worry about it. And that is exactly what we want to be able to create with them. So the more you practice this, the better you're going to get, the more you can do with it. All right. Let me know if you have questions. If not, I will see you guys next Friday. Uh, wish me and Stark luck. We're going to be at our dock diving uh, for Ultimate Air Dogs again this weekend in Cave Creek, Arizona. Hopefully we do some pretty cool stuff there. Um, otherwise, See you guys later. Have a great night.